So we're making all these videos for you guys about how to get cool shots and how to make your footage look good. Now we have VFX, that's a great way to do it. Color grading, that's another really good way to do it. But one thing we haven't talked about is camera movement. That is easily one of the best ways to make your shot look cool. Now, when I mean camera movement, I'm talking about that cool cinematic stuff that you usually associate with big budget movies. Usually what that entails is they take their cameras and they put it on a crane and the crane goes up 50 feet and swoops down all nice and smooth or uh, they take it and they put it on like a little track a, a called a dolly track which allows the camera to perfectly move side to side and basically all these motions you're seeing are it's stuff that's impossible to do with your own hands and that's why it looks so cool is you're seeing angles that typically you don't see in day-to-day -day life plus they are rock solid there's no shake there's no handheld motion in it and there's no like recognizing that it's actually just a guy holding the camera there you know it's 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 larger than life and i'm going to show you guys how to do that today with the warp stabilization filter so there's a lot of ways to stabilize your footage when you're just shooting handheld a lot of lenses have actually stabilization built in and uh, you'll usually see a little switch but that only corrects for like little handheld motion but that's not going to help you for like big swooping shots and stuff like that so i'm going to give you guys the big list of do's and don'ts when you're shooting with uh warp stabilization in mind usually long steady motions work best with the program um, that means, you know, taking the camera and going over like 30 feet with it, but just generally keeping it in the same position. Or, um, for that matter, just, you know, keeping the angle or the line just very smooth, steady, long, simple. You don't want to be sitting there like going around, going through curved hallways, spinning the camera around. Um, that really doesn't work with the software, so that's the only limitation you have. Handheld, walking forwards, just trying to get a smooth shot pushing in on a subject. First step you want to do here is you want to make sure that you're always framing out a little wider than you think you're gonna have to because the first thing that warp stabilization does to any footage is it crops it in because it needs all the extra room on the outside to kind of compensate. I'm gonna wanna take my shutter speed and crank that up a little bit, about one over, one over 200 for this shot. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna reduce the motion blur in the shot making the shot a lot easier to track and stabilize later because there's no motion blur. Not to mention, you can always add in motion blur later if you really want it. And going. Oh yeah, cool. You'll also notice the speed I was going at was actually pretty slow, and that's because of just simply the 3D shake involved with that. If you want to do it a lot faster, it's actually pretty easy to just hop on a pair of wheels, such as like a scooter, skateboard, even a pair of Heelys, and uh, essentially get those shots at a lot higher speeds. I'm gonna show you guys one of these moves right now. I'm gonna go all the way up and down the hallway and get one sweet, super fast shot going down it. Nice. So it's already pretty smooth, but the warp stabilization takes out all those little bumps. So those were forward and backwards movements. Those are pretty simple. Uh, sometimes you want to do more complex ones though, such as like side to side movements uh, or like orbiting around subjects. And uh, usually the biggest thing you have to look out for when doing these types of shots though is the difference between the foreground and the background objects. The reason this makes it harder is because when you have stuff at such great distances from each other, the slightest movement you'll make will create a huge difference in motion between the objects and it's a lot harder to correct for that. So when shooting those shots um, and dealing with foreground objects, there's two solutions you can really do is uh, you can move back a little farther uh, just to get everything pushed back and recessed into the space you're working in or you can just move in front of them, just cut them out of the shot completely and uh, that will definitely solve all your problems. Also, there's one other thing that's really dangerous to have in your shot, and that is natural lens flares. Because when filming the flare, the motion of it is relative to how you're actually moving the camera around. So when you stabilize the footage, rather than having a smooth flare, suddenly it's going to be all wobbly and shaking around like it was in your original footage. Now that I've finally filmed all my footage, I'm going to bring you back onto my computer, and you can use Warp Stabilizer in either Adobe CS 5.5, CS 6, and now Adobe Premiere CS 6 as well. Really handy. All you got to do, Go to your effect tab, go to your distort tab, and apply warp stabilizer. Now right when you apply it, it's going to start analyzing the footage, so you have to wait a little bit. The basic settings you got to know when looking at your footage are the following. At the top you see a tab that says smooth motion, you also see no motion if you open it up. Smooth motion will give you exactly what it tells you, smooth motion. No motion is really good for when you're just trying to stabilize a handheld shot. Generally, you're not moving around, it's just correcting for the shakiness of the shot. They'll stabilize it and lock it off and it's great. 
So the next one down is smoothness, and by default it's set to 50%. If you slide it to 0%, it will turn off smoothness completely, and you'll be left with your raw footage. If you set it to 100, it's just going to go crazy, and your footage might start looking a little bit weird. You might have to experiment. Next one down from that, you see method. By default, it's set to subspace warp. You can go through a whole bunch of options here. Generally, you only use subspace warp and position scale rotation. The difference between the two is that subspace warp will actually warp the edges of your footage to correct for the perspective that your uh, camera is shifting around in. So it actually alters the footage. Uh, position scale and rotation, what that does is that attempts to correct your footage all by using just default motion, such as you know sliding it around, rotating it, scaling it. It's not actually distorting the footage at all. So depending on the result you're trying to get and the shot you're trying to work with, uh, one might be better over the other, but generally subspace warp does the job. But the other one that can possibly come in handy is the stabilize and synthesize edges. And what that does is that actually will compensate for the automatic scaling effects being applied to your footage and actually try and rebuild the outside of your frame. The synthesized edges though, it takes a lot of rendering time and generally it's more time than it's worth. So, you know, a good range for your scale to be set at is anywhere between 100 and I'd say about 120% for your footage. If you start pushing it any further than that, uh, you're gonna start seeing some serious like degradation of the footage and it's not gonna look that good. So if your shot's going past that, you might wanna take your smoothness down a little bit. Here's also a problem that we didn't run into, but you guys might. So now let's say you're shooting a shot and it's going great and then someone kinda walks into the side of the frame and comes back out and when you come in to track it, it throws your whole track off because suddenly it pushes the frame in because you have this random object just blocking your footage. Now, you can actually fix that pretty easily by using masking. And what you want to do is basically just select the mat around the good areas to track and stabilize and pre-compose that so that when you apply the filter, it will only be looking at that one area and all the messy stuff that you don't want to stabilize, it will just be completely ignored. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If you have any questions about this, feel free to tweet at us. Or uh, maybe uh, you can read the manual, it's on the internet. Uh, whatever works.